Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is Lindsay. When you're watching this, I'm still in Florida and I'm trying to film ahead because I have a Florida vacation. And so we're going to do a little craft with me. And this is kind of on the coattails of my previous video where we were making dangles with wax seals. We're gonna be making dangles again today, but a different way. We're going to be using little printed ephemera pieces and a cereal box. So you won't need too many items. You'll just need um, any kind of small little ephemera. I suggest my vintage fussy cut ads. These are on my website. And if you go to Lindsay's Digitals, they're just a couple back or you can type in um, fussy cut or vintage fussy cut ads. They'll pop up. There's two pages. Here they are. I tried to size them at a nice small size for collaging and making other things. And then you can also purchase them printed in the print shop. But these are the ones we're going to be working with today. And then you'll need some kind of chipboard cards. Well, cardstock's probably too thin unless you uh, double it up. But I'm going to be using this graham cracker, honey graham cracker box, just repurposing this cardboard uh, because, hey, it's free at this point. Otherwise, I'd be throwing it in the trash. You're going to need a hole punch. I'm using my crocodile so I can use the tiny hole punch. Um, you're going to need glue. Today, I am using quick dry tacky glue. I wanted to use my art glitter glue, but I need to refill it and I can't get the top off the refill. I'm going to have to ask my husband to help me for some reason. I should be able to do it, you guys. I don't know. So I have quick dry tacky glue today. I've just put it in this little refill bottle to make it easier. You're going to need an ink. Um, I'm using black. I'm trying to use up this cheap black. You can get these on Amazon. Um, but I would suggest a black or a brown, maybe a red for this color palette here. I'm using black. And then an assortment of uh, buttons and bulb pins. I have 12 of each. I'm not sure exactly how many I'm going to be doing. So I have those. All right, let's get started. Oh, scissors, you will need scissors. That's kind of a given. I'm not gonna cut everything out. I'm just gonna go, you know, uh, decision by decision, what I wanna do and stop when I feel like stopping. So I just printed these onto regular copy paper using my laser printer. That way I'm not using a lot in ink or in paper. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I'm going to be backing this onto the chipboard, the cereal box cover. So I don't need it to be thick. I'm just going to cut that out. So isn't this cute? Hammond's Grape Dust Kills Mildew, a sure protector, 1886. I thought that was so cute. It's a little label, a little vintage label. And just rip this apart here so we can work with it just a little bit easier. Oh, okay. I am going to glue it over the colored part so that this is on the back and you could actually journal on it if you wanted to, or you could, you know, cover over it, but I'm going to leave it like that. This is a no sew tutorial. However, if you are very comfortable with your sewing machine and you know that it can sew through a cereal box or chipboard, which mine can, you could stitch around the edges, but that's not what I'm doing for this project. Make sure the glue is light and all the way to the edge, maybe using a permanent glue stick, such as an Uhu stick. We might try that. Um, might be a good option as well. You do not want soppy glue that is just spreading out everywhere. That would be a nightmare mess. And I think what we'll do is put several down and then cut them out. That might save us a little bit of time. Um, what else do I want to do here? What other hardware men do? Let's do some different shapes. This would be great for a vintage journal. Whatever ones you don't use in the project, if you're not making dangles out of all of them, you can glue onto pages and journals later on. So just a very light, I mean, you want to get most of the surface area and you don't want to miss the corners or the edges. That is the most important part with the gluing, but you do not want huge globs. Okay. 
What else? I kind of like this little flower pot advertisement since it is a different shape. Isn't that cute? I think this would be really neat with a bunch of die cut flowers or fussy cut flowers from an old gardening book sticking out of it. There's so many options. You can really do this project with any ephemera from any digital kit or printed kit or even fussy cut images from a book. Oh, I like this florist one in here. So thanks for visiting with me today as we do this little project. I hope that you're having a fun day and creating or at least planning your next creation. Maybe you have to work or you have errands to run and you're not going to get to your craft room, but you can still plan and think ahead about what you're going to work on next. Or if you only have a few minutes, you can always just get something started, print out a couple pages, collect your supplies, start the first step. You don't have to start and finish a project in one day. You can do it in little steps. Sometimes when I'm creating a journal, I purposefully do it in steps. So for example, you know, step one might be getting together my coffee dyed paper. Step two might be picking my um, digital papers and printing them. Step three, you get the idea. It, it go, kind of goes on like that. And then, you know, eventually it's step four, put together the signatures, step five, sew them in. And so even if you only do one step a day or a half a step a day, you're still making progress. A little bit done is better than nothing done. Even just taking five minutes to breathe and pull out a favorite craft supply can help reduce stress and put you in a good mindset. These are just really therapeutic and fun to work on. Cement label. I really had in mind like collaging when I created this set. They're all actual vintage ads or I might have enhanced them a little bit or color corrected some of the colors, but they're all real. And you can print them over and over again for your projects. The nice thing about these is you can use them in so many different ways. Oh, leave myself enough room to cut in between there. All right, let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I think I'll do one more. Which one do I want to do? This is cute, this little mustard tin. Super cute. I like these easy to cut out shapes, but they're still different than the norm. This glue is working pretty well for this project. I, I admit I was a little worried. I've been having so many glue problems till I found art glitter glue. So trying to go come back and use this tacky glue, I was afraid I wouldn't like it, but it's, it's decent. It's doing what I need it to. So I'll be thankful. All right, let's move on to step two and that will be cutting these out. So I'm just going to remove the excess. I'm not worried about perfectly placing everything. This is a piece of trash that I'm reusing. So it's not exactly valuable real estate, unless maybe you do not buy a lot of um, boxes like cereal boxes or cracker boxes, but you might have friends or family who do, and you could use packaging that you get in mail as well. Or if you just have cardstock, you could layer up a couple of layers to get a heavier 
feel. This is a nice thick feel now. One thing I really dislike about not making my dangles thick enough is that they can get crushed because they're hanging on the cover or the edge of a page or on a tag. They tend to be moved a lot, wiggled a lot, and if they're not sturdy, they get crushed and they get bent and they lose their charm and usability. So that's why we are reinforcing it. And I mean, you can go even crazier with reinforcing. If I had printed these ephemera pieces onto 110 pound cardstock, glued them on, and then I glued 110 pound cardstock onto the back of these, it would be even thicker. I really don't feel any need to do that. This feels plenty sturdy enough and I'd rather not um, use expensive supplies if I don't have to. Copy paper is cheap. So is an empty cereal box. When you start getting into good quality card stocks, the heck, it's a little more pri pricey. These shapes, I chose pretty simple shapes. They're fairly easy to cut out. A little hack, if you have trouble cutting out, you hate scissors, or maybe you've been cutting out a lot and you have a blister, that's happened to me before, um, you can take a paper punch and you can punch out part of, you know, maybe a circle punch or something like that. And then you can punch the same shape out of the cereal box and then you can glue them together. I have done that before. I um, did that for a Victoria Designs video back several weeks ago. It, if you want to look it up, it is the cooking ephemera folder one. Um, I made a dangle set to go with that and I took a circle punch and I circle punched out areas of her journal pages that I wanted to highlight in the dangles and then I also punched out circles from a cereal box or chipboard and then I glued them together. They lined up perfectly and it was happily ever after. So if you really hate fussy cutting, because you got to be pretty close here, otherwise you're going to see it's not going to look right. So if you'd rather not mess with that, use a punch or stick with something just like a square or a rectangle where you don't have to cut around in a circular shape. All right, so these are all great. Next step is going to be inking them. I am going to slightly ink. I'm using ink pad to object, but if you have a um, inker, whatever they're called, you can use that too. I'm going around the front and then I'm also going around the back. I feel like for this project, that's really important to me because I'm leaving this craft color so this makes it look more finished and then this can be journaled on and a little note or a message or something even the ones that are black around the edges i'm still just flicking just a little bit of black onto them because eh, because i don't have a good reason i'm kind of just you know in the groove here It's a wonderful mindless thing to do while you're chatting with someone or you're watching TV. Have a whole pile of things to ink front and back. And as thick as these are, they are super easy to hold onto and to move around. The paper isn't bending. All right, we are inked. Next is going to be punching holes. I want to give just a tiny bit of thought. I never want to overthink anything, but a tiny bit of thought about where I want the hole. How do I want it to hang? So black stone uh, or black stone florist. I could punch it here and have it hang like that, but I want it to hang down like a tag. And see if I, if I punch it here, then it's going to hang you just figure out which way you personally want it to hang. There's no right or wrong way. Do you want to hang it straight up and down off to the side? I just give it a second of thought. It's not a big deal. Sometimes if I can't decide, I just go ahead and 
punch wherever feels right. And sometimes there's a very obvious place that I want it. But again, I shouldn't spend more than two seconds deliberating on each one. Okay. You could go ahead and put a little eyelet in there if you wanted to. I'm not going to because it's nice and sturdy and I'm going to add a button. I just don't feel the need to. I have black bulb pins. So that's going to work really well with this. And then I am just going to select a button and finish it off like that. Isn't that cute? Really like that. a great way to use up extra buttons that maybe aren't really standalone buttons for covers but they still need a place there's a lot of good options don't overthink it on the buttons either I'm just thinking about what size I want and how much of the image it is going to cover it's really all I'm thinking about it should be just a couple seconds per without overthinking it. If, you, if you're a person who really, really enjoys the overthinking process, then by all means do that. But if it frustrates you, like it frustrates me, then just give yourself the freedom to make a quick decision and not second guess yourself. This is kind of a fun process as well and it doesn't really take that long to get this many done got some nice vintage buttons here too we have just completed a set of eight dangles I absolutely love them now I have listed them in my shop as soon as I finished filming this video. So I don't know if they're still available or if somebody found them and purchased them. I haven't promoted them anyway, but anywhere. Um, but people still come to my shop and check things out. Maybe they're looking at a journal I had done a video on and they just poke around and find something. So if they're not in Lindsay's Handmade when you're watching this, then somebody else has already purchased them. But I hope then that just spurs you on to create your own set. Here, I'm going to come down and in so you can see how beautiful those are so much vintage and so much fun thank you so much for watching and crafting along with me i hope you'll give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you have not and i will see all of you next time with more inspiration